بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم All perfect praises due to Allah the Almighty I testify that none is worthy of worship except Allah and I testify that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is his final prophet and Messenger. May Allah exalt his mention <clears throat> as well as that of his families and all his companions. <clears throat> Last time we concluded with the end of verse 13. In this session we will start with verse 14. Allah Azza wa says, وَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْمُعْصِرَاتِ مَا أَنْثَجَّاجًا And sent down from the rain clouds pouring water. Allah Azza wa Jal created everything for wisdom. Water is the source of life. People drink from it, animals drink from it, it is used for irrigating plants and vegetations. As a matter of fact, Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيٍّ And we made from water the source for the life of everything. So Allah Azza wa Jal bestowed upon us the favor of sending down rain. But not only that, He sent it sweet water. It could have been salty. As He said in the Quran, وَلَوْ شَاءَ لَجَعَلَهُ أُجَاجًا and he, if he wished so, he would have made it salty. Can you imagine what would happen to earth if rain was to fall, salty water, as salty water? No plants would grow, and man would have no source of sweet water to drink. So Allah Azza wa Jal is enumerating in, in here, as we mentioned in the very first session, Allah Azza wa Jal is mentioning the favors upon mankind. To draw the attention of the disbelievers to this fact, and again, to tell them that the one who is capable of creating this, perfectly set world or system is capable of resurrecting the dead. Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, commented on this saying, this verse refers to when it says pouring water, he said it is water that is continuous and abundant. Rain doesn't stop. If it stops here, it is falling there. If it stops there, it is falling in a third place and so on and so forth. And Imam Al-Tabari, when commenting on this verse, said something that's really beautiful, which again is one of the reasons Allah Azza wa Jal is mentioning these favors to mankind, especially the disbelievers at the time of revelation. He said this verse reflects two things. 
the vast mercy and favor of Allah upon mankind. Number two, the need of mankind to Allah Azza wa Jalla. We can't do without. We must submit that we are nothing. If Allah was to forsake us, we will be ruined. He said, it reflects the vast mercy and favor of Allah upon mankind. And secondly, it reflects or highlights the need of mankind to Allah and their weakness. Then Allah Azza wa Jal in verse 15 says, لِنُخْرِجَ بِهِ حَبًّا وَنَبَاتًا That we may bring forth thereby grain and vegetation. Ibn Kathir says, Grain is what is used or what mankind uses to save for the times of need and for animals to be fed on and fresh vegetations to eat. The following verse, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَجَنَّاتٍ أَلْفَافًا and gardens of entwined growth. Ibn Kathir says that these are gardens of fruits that are diversified in their types and their colors and their smell and their taste. Yet, they are all in one garden. Again, to prove the ability of Allah Azza wa Jal. One garden containing all this. Trees and plants with different tastes, different colors, different smells, different types. Imam Al-Qurtubi said, it also reflects that these gardens have a large number of trees, the branches of which intermingle together. With this verse, we conclude the set in which Allah Azza wa Jal was showing mankind His favors upon them. And if you remember, in the first couple of sessions, we said that this chapter, this Surah al naba is broken or can be broken into segments or sets of verses. This was one of the segments or sets of verses in which Allah Azza wa Jal showed mankind His favor and mercy upon them and through that, directed their eyes and minds and hearts to his ability of creation. And thus, the conclusion, he is able to resurrect you as he was able to create you and all these other things mentioned from the state of non-existence. The following set of four verses, Allah Azza wa Jal describes, in short, the Day of Judgment. Allah says, إِنَّ يَوْمَ الْفَصْلِ كَانَ مِيقَاتًا يَوْمَ يُنْفَخُ فِي الصُّورِ يَوْمَ يُنْفَخُ فِي الصُّورِ فَتَأْتُونَ أَفْوَاجًا وَفُتِحَتِ السَّمَاءُ فَكَانَتْ أَبْوَابًا 
وسيرت الجبال فكانت سرابا which means indeed the day of judgment is an appointed time the day the horn is blown and you will come forth in multitudes and the heaven is opened and will become gateways and the mountains are removed and will be but a mirage Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned his ability to create and the set before that and in here he is telling people what the consequence will be what is awaiting them Shaykh Al-Uthaymeen Rahmatullahi Alayhi said that after Allah Azza wa Jal stated evidences to his perfect ability and capability of creation and resurrection, he stated the situation of the hereafter, <clears throat> the appointed time when Allah Azza wa Jal will gather all people. And he reminded people with that day and that it would be the day he judges between people. And he gave it a set time, but did not disclose that time. And the secret behind not disclosing the time of the day of judgment is that otherwise people would relax. And the Prophet ﷺ said, when a person dies, then his day of resurrection has started. So if one knows his death, or his death time, which is the initiating point of the day of resurrection for him, or the day of judgment rather for him, accountability, then he would relax until the last moment and then sit in, in a masjid somewhere, isolating himself, crying to Allah for forgiveness, and that's it. People will not strive to please Allah Azza wa Jal. They will be inclined to dunya. They will be following the footsteps of shaitan. So Allah Azza wa Jal did not disclose the time of the day of judgment for that purpose. This narration that I just mentioned, is reported by or narrated by uh, Anas and reported by uh, Al Imam al Daylami. Sheikh Abdullah Sa'ad, may Allah preserve him, said the meaning of this narration is also found in the books of Al Imam al Bukhari and Al Imam Muslim. And the meaning of this narration, when the son of Adam or when one of you dies, the day of judgment starts for him, meaning the journey of the hereafter starts. There is a, a report that reads, the grave is the, is the first stage from the stages of the hereafter. So death is the first stage from the stages of the hereafter. And that's when accountability starts for every one of us. Allah Azza wa Jal starts that in the grave with either bliss or punishment. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكًا Which means, and whoever turns away from my remembrance, indeed, he will have a depressed life. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, this refers to 
the punishment in the grief. Abu Sa'id al Khudri, may Allah be pleased with him, he said, This refers to the punishment of the grave, where the grave narrows down and compresses the body of the deceased until his bones intermingle together. And this is what is called the press of the grave. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to protect us from the punishment of the grave. We will conclude with this narration and resume, inshaAllah, in the following session in more elaboration on the verse 17 of Surah An Naba. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك